And I am going to read the disclaimer. So pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See the instructions that were contained in the public meeting notice. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Okay, um, this is January 4, 2024. First time I've actually said that. Um, and this is a special meeting of the DAAC um, called to um, talk about a variance request from Amherst College. And I believe we have some presenters, but I don't know who they are. So Pamela, would you wanna do any introductions? So we have- Oh no, first uh, we need a roll call, I guess, right? Even though it's a special meeting we need? Yes, please. Okay. Um, okay, so Elise Link, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Marty Smith, are you here? I'm here. Jim Crenier, are you here? I am. Okay, and Myra Ross, I am here. I know that Saren Darren, Ian Rotter, whatever, I can't say his name, and Cody Rooney are not here, but we do have a quorum. Good. Oh, so Cody now. Rooney Cody's is here. There. Oh, Cody is there. Yeah. yeah. You snuck in. I didn't. My computer did not announce you. I'm sorry. He's, he's not here. totally in yet. Oh, he's coming. Okay. He's on his way. Okay. So we have Cody. So um, this is a as a special meeting. I don't know if we have public comment or anything. I think we don't. Right? Is that so, right, Pamela? So I think we did have public comment on the agenda. Oh, um, we did. Okay. But. Okay. Um, and you do have one member uh, in oh, okay. the... Um... All right, so we have a public comment person. Uh, who is the public person? So let me just go over to the participants. So um, it is a member from Representative Dom's office. I don't know if that individual oh, cool. would okay. like to make a public comment, but we can invite them to raise their hand if they would like to make public comment and I can bring them over. Okay, I'm not seeing a, ha a hand okay. raise, so I think that okay. you can proceed with the special meeting. Okay, all right. So we have some um, uh, people from the from a, a student center project at Amherst College. And um, I guess um, you sent us a packet of uh, a lot of schematic drawings, um, but I did not detect any real explanatory text. So if you could give us some explanation, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, before, so our two visit, uh, two presenters are Tom Davies and Mark Andrews from Amherst College. And I just wanna acknowledge that um, town counselor, um, Pat DeAngelis is also here with us. Ah, great, cool, okay. 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 Take it away. Who's ever taking it? <laughs> all right. Um, well, this is Tom Davies, and uh, good to see you all. And thank you so much for taking uh, the time to have a special meeting. Um, uh, much appreciated. Um, and uh, I will. Uh, I'll. I'll refrain from reminiscing about you know all the things that many of us have collaborated on in the past, including my son's educations and you know all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Uh, uh, but uh, uh, so so our our situation, just to kind of zoom out for a second, is that um, we are uh, repurposing uh, the old science center here at Amherst College um, and and building a new uh, student center, and that will include a dining commons, um, replacing our our um, current dining commons. And as part of that project, our uh, designers had included um, uh, in, in Massachusetts, non-compliant stairs, a, a spiral stair. It's really a communicating stair 
um, from the third floor to the fourth floor. And uh, not unlike um, similar situations in the in our new science center that have kind of you know spiral communicating stairs and also in our new uh, greenway residence halls they have uh, a number of spiral communicating stairs so um, to be completely transparent um, we didn't we didn't anticipate an, an issue uh, with this um, and you know went through the 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 process of uh, seeking a variance uh, and, um, it, and again, just full transparency, didn't bother the, the DAAC with it either, um, just based on the experience of the prior two projects. Um, and uh, what, uh, what happened though, is that the uh, Architectural Access Board um, denied that request for the spiral stair. And so um, we have, we then charged our designers with coming up with a, a different design um, that met the, um, you know, that, that addressed some of the uh, concerns uh, that the AAB had expressed, um, and, which they've done. And that is what we're here to talk with you about today. Uh, and we- Before you go on, can I interrupt yeah. with the question? What sure. is a communicating stair? Ah, uh, so it is a, a convenience stair, if you will. It's it's in addition to the you know required stairs that are fully compliant that are there for uh, egress and you know everything that that goes into the life safety um, aspects of uh, getting up and down through buildings. You know, so there are, so for example, in this building, like many buildings, right, and in most buildings, quite honestly, and in this country, there are two full-on stairs that are in two-hour rated, uh, you know, enclosures, and, and um, there's absolutely nothing about them that doesn't meet every aspect of code requirement, including uh, accessibility requirements. Um, in addition to those stairs, there is this communicating stair or convenience stair that uh, you know kind of spirals up from through a kind of an open lobby space, right, with a double height ceiling, and and uh, that's that's the basic basic design of that. Does that? When that? would it be used and by whom? Um, it would be used generally and by kind of anyone. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the fully compliant stair is only, I forget, Mark, like 40 feet away or something like that. It's, you know, it's nearby. Yeah. Um, yeah. but this is kind of more of a, you know, kind of a more well, welcoming kind of, um, sculptural, if you will, uh, uh, stair that, um, people, I, I, I would guess my, you know, would use, if they didn't, you know, have a, a, a uh, if, if there if there wasn't a rush of people kind of coming out of a, I don't know what a, a yoga class or something like that, you know, in which case you might be like, okay, let's use the big stair. Um, but I think that it's a it's something that one or two people would use um, if they were going if it was the kind of the, the shortest route between two places, you know. Okay. So it's really an auxiliary stair that really doesn't need to be there, but it's there for aesthetic appeal and it has some functional appeal. Is that? You wrapped it up exactly correctly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, and and one of one of the solutions, which we don't want to do, is simply not have a stair there because there's you know it's not necessary from any any kind of code perspective. Um, so, but, but, you know, that's something we have to think about. Um, so, uh, okay. So Mark, can we bring up that stair? I, I assume that we want to talk through. Sure. Uh, the... sure. So I will need to, um, give Mark access, which I will do now. That was going to be one of my questions. I'll make you a co-host and you will be able to uh, share screen. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. While we're waiting, Tom, are there still two circular stairs in this project? Um, yes, there is a, there is a uh, technically there is the spiral stair, uh, which is what we're talking about here. And then there's a curved stair, 
which also is auxiliary or convenient stair. Um, Are you using a mouse? Yes. To, may I ask, I'm legally blind, and may I ask if you move the, a mouse to show people things, can you move it slowly? Absolutely. Thank you. So, um, Tom, did you yes. get a partial approval? I, I'm just, I'm trying to understand this because I expected to see both stairs in this application. Did you get a partial approval for the other stair? Um, great question. And and the, the answer is kind of. Um, so this is actually not a new um, uh, application. It's an addendum to the existing. Okay, so the, thank you. I so just the, needed to understand that. From yeah, a, yeah, yeah. From a yeah, the the feedback we got from the the ED for, uh, from the AAB, sorry for all the acronyms, is that um, that that there didn't seem to be um, the, and take this for what it's worth because it's not you know definitive or in writing or anything like that, but it didn't seem to be concerned about the curved stair. There was really all the commentary and discussion was about the spiral stair. At, you know, okay. It's, 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 so so that's really meaning. good. That's I yeah. can I step in for a second? That's really good yeah. to understand because the board didn't have a problem with the larger um which you're calling a curved stair, but really is a spiral stair, but it's just got a bigger and uh it's wider and it's got more tread depth. So and that's technical. Correct. But yeah. this, I would call it an oval stair. You call it the pill stair. Um, is grander. Yes. Thank you. That was so it has a wider question. arc on the one they approved. And this one is more compact? No, actually. No. Um, no, I can't tell. Is Tom, is this one the same width as the other, as the one that they seem to have approved? Uh -huh. Oh, uh, Mark, do you have that offhand? Um, um, I think, I, Joan, I think it's like, well, it's a different shape, right? The one, the one that they had no issue with was circular, but a larger diameter. Um, and I think the radial dimensions of the treads, if you, uh, if you look kind of down here, I think what we did is we modeled this stair off uh, the other stair a little bit. Okay, closer. that's what I thought you did. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So... <laughs> I can't even see where you're talking. I can't. This picture is confusing. Oh. Um. So yeah, maybe I can orient you to the uh, the drawing. Yeah. A bit. <laughs> if you look at the left side, this is sort of the overall plan. Uh, the mm -hmm. the right side of that leftmost plan has an extra courtyard. This is kind of the upper level. Ah. Okay. Um. And then if you look at the sort of Almost to the bottom of that plan, you have this shaded pill looking thing. That's the stair we're talking about. Mm. Um, if, uh, if you can get a, a slightly enlarged version of it, as we look to the upper right. Um, and this, this illustrates a couple of uh, flat landing that's been incorporated in the stair design. And I think more importantly, the fact that. Unlike what you'd see in a real spiral stair, this this being a winding stair, it's a it's a more gradual, um, less abrupt corner that it's taking. Mm. Yeah. And then this last plan right here actually shows uh, where the footfall is supposed to be, about twelve inches out from the wall, nine inches or so, plus or minus from the edge of the handrail, uh, about as close as you'd comfortably walk to the handrail anyway. Um, and that gives you a sense of how much tread you really have to use, how much how much uh, contact your foot would have with the stair tread. Yeah. Um, so correct me if I missed anything, Tom, but I think those are the highlights. That that's exactly right, Mark. Um, and and um, just to you know put a finer point on it, the um, the concern that we heard from uh, the AAB was primarily uh, the size of the treads, um, you know, 
on the winders, if you will. And the redesign makes those significantly larger, even to the point where it's really kind of two, if you're walking on the, on the outside, it's really kind of two steps per uh, tread, you know, at, at over two feet of width. So um, we, we think, you know, we, who knows, <laughs> we'll find out next week, but we, we think they're gonna be much uh, happier with this. Um, but that's, oh, and I'm sorry, a couple of other things, right? Yeah, maybe can you zoom in on those adjustments there? Sure. Um, because I should I should mention those as well. Um, the the uh, another comment that that is that uh, uh, while uh, by the by kind of the rest of the building code on a spiral stair, you don't need to have a handrail on either side on both sides to speak. Um, it it's obviously better to have a handrail on both sides. So this new design adds a handrail uh, to both sides instead of just one side. And then as Mark mentioned, we have a landing kind of halfway up as well, um, which we didn't have before. So those are the, the you know, the kind of the general changes associated with it. You know, it, it still tries to be, you know, elegant and uh, curved and, you know, kind of uh, sculptural, if you will. Um, but it's it's trying to be much more um, kind of gracious from a, uh, you know, how you'd interact with it and uh, less tricky. Um, and even, you know, uh, I don't know, I would, I would, in my opinion, anyway, um, enjoyable, you know, that you can really kind of, um, go up those stairs and, uh, feel really comfortable, um, with the, you know, the footfall, um, and you know, be able to, uh, if you if you are so able, look out into the space below you and and whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Wait. Tom, I have one more question. So these stairs are only forty inches wide, so they're really and and in your sketch of the the detail of that uh, winder tread. You're only looking at going one way in this. It's not really designed to have two people pass on this stair. Is that yes. correct? Yeah, that that I think that's a fair statement. Um, part of the reason that the the landing was added um, was to you know address the potential for you know being a little less awkward should should you get halfway up it and find somebody coming down the other side. But yeah, it, it's not intended to be you know, large amounts of people going up and down at the same time. Okay. I, th I think that's kind of one of the, one of the puzzling things I had was why would you want to do that? But that's a whole different bag. Yep. This is a much safer stair and it looks more comfortable. <laughs> All right. Elise has her hand up. Okay, go ahead. Uh, um, so I'm I'm talking from a vision impaired perspective. Um, since these stairs are, you know, they don't go straight up and you know they're a bit a shape to them. Do the um, edges of each stair are they marked in any kind of color contrast so that people can see the edges of the stairs? The, there are nosings on each of the stairs. These are these are um, poured concrete, um, so uh, they would have uh, the metal nosings across each of them. Um, Meaning, you mean like uh, a tactile? Yes, like a, 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 a. I'm not exactly sure what's designed right now uh, in these, but typically it's a it's kind of like a an angled piece of steel. With a, a a tactile surface to it that's okay. only about you know two inches by two inches or something like that if you think about the angle. Going but if you're using a cane path. like I do, or you know, any you can tell that the edge of the stair is coming up and you're going to step down. Hmm. Not necessarily, Elise. Yeah, if you're see, going, if you're going to do it tactually, yeah. But, but if what you were it, asking was doing it visually, yeah. And I don't know that it's built in that it will actually be a contrast, visual contrast with the concrete. 
It depends on how they're going to paint it. I mean, even with a guide dog, I sometimes, I mean, I count on her, but it's more comforting to kind of have some visual mm -hmm. color contrast. Yeah, yeah. So I think what she's asking for is like what you would put on any staircase. You know, sometimes yeah. they have that yellow edging or orange edging or whatever contrasted color. You know what? I mean, I'm it talking helps. as a blind person, but I think they I think they do put those on steps. They Marty, put them on some. Here. They don't put them on all. <laughs> yeah. And yes. so I've I've nearly gone ass over tea kettle because of that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I I my my guess, uh, and again, I, I'm sorry that I don't know the detail. Uh, I don't know that there is quite honestly at this point uh, a defined detail for that nosing. But generally, what we do is, um, you know, the concrete, of course, is a is a, a light gray color. The nosing is more of a, you know, kind of a dark steel color, and mm. it would have a contrast to it as a result. Um, that's that's how it was over in the science center. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, a few years ago. So you're not planning to put any color into the concrete, no, or the nosing. Okay, I mean, sometimes the, the, people put color in it when they pour it. I mean, you yeah, know, the, when they mix the, it. The, no, the nosing would be, um, yeah, a darker color. Well, yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> my question my is, sense. what's the difference in uh, the width of the step? You said it could be as much as two feet on the outside. What would it be on the inside? Uh, 11 inches where, where your foot would actually fall. Um, it, it it tapers closer to the the center. Um, yeah. and I don't have that dimension, but you know, kind of the uh, as Mark was saying, kind of if you measure nine inches out from the handrail, uh, that's that at that location is eleven inches of tread width. Ooh, don't step okay. the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, 11, I mean, eleven inches is sort of a standard tread you'd find. Yeah. It. Yeah. So that seems reasonable. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm interested in Marty's question about the two way. We've had problems with other people's projects with very narrow staircases that were supposed to go two ways. Um, and this one seems auxiliary and not very far from the main staircase. So if people choose not to use it, they have a pretty reasonable alternative that isn't very far. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. And we're talking four inches less than than a, a standard staircase. A standard staircase is 44 inches wide? Correct. Two-way? Yes. yes. Wow. I guess that they probably came with those dimensions before people got wider. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, that's like two chairs sitting next to each other. Okay. Um, all right. So it does, you know, and you, um, you want us to give you, I mean, the feedback is, I guess, the questions have been answered, right? Would, do you have more questions? Jim or Cody, do you have a question? I don't. Well, let me see where I am here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, as long as the building is fully accessible, uh, this basically seems like a decorative option, uh, which hardly anybody with a disability, any kind of disability is going to use. But, you know, it's okay. Okay. Um, I mean, that's sort of how it feels to me, unless... It is the shortest distance between two very important points, and the rest of the people have to go way out of their way. So that's the question, you know, about and I don't know where it comes out. I have no idea what the building would be like, but if it's the main entrance to where if it goes up to the main entrance to the cafeteria line where you swipe your card, yeah. then it's you know, then it's um then it's not a a communication or Convenience stair, it seems to be 
by placement a main stair. You know what I'm saying? It depends what it connects. I, I, I'm happy to respond to that. Um, okay. And I, and I, I completely agree with your point. Um, but no, th this is uh, in addition to, um, you know, the, the circulating stairs. And um, so it, it goes from the third floor. Now, when we say third floor, that's a little misleading because, you know, this is if, if, if anybody was in the old science center before it was decommissioned, um, you might remember that from, from the, um, the main quad side of our campus, you enter, uh, you could have into, entered that building, and that's the third floor. Okay. Um, so from, from the um, east side, you enter on the first floor, uh, and then from the, uh, from the west side, you enter this building at the third floor. And the third floor is kind of uh, largely open, um, studies. Um, it has a, a number of meeting rooms. It has a, a cafe. There's, you know, it's kind of the, the lively hub of the building, if you will, um, near the, you know, kind of spilling out onto the, the level at, at the quad. Um, and what's, ha what's happening on the fourth floor is um, some student offices, um, a um, screening room, um, you know, a lounge space. There's there are some religious um, spaces there, um, Muslim prayer room. So it's uh, it's it's kind of an extension of the third floor programmatically, um, but it's not like you know the main dining hall or something like that, where lots of people are streaming back and forth to it all the time. Um, so that's the, the 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 first part of the answer I would provide. Uh, but the second part of the answer, probably more to the point, is that the fully compliant full stair is uh, just to the south of, of this, and we should have included it maybe in this drawing. But it's it's literally like you know twenty feet away or something like that, um, maybe less than that. Yeah, it's, it's there's right an north. elevator right there. Correct. Oh, and and the elevator, correct. Cool. That that also is right nearby. Uh, Excellent. That's just, just to the north of this communicating stair. Oh, that's great. So the the dining commons is off. It is going to be if you come in from the quad side, you have to go downstairs. Correct. One floor, yep. one floor down or two. One floor down. Yep. Okay. So most <laughs> people come in. People will come in from the quad. They'll go down the stairs, um, which does not involve this structure. Yep, or they correct. will go down the elevator. That's correct. And from the other side, they will go up. Yep. Okay. Sounds All right. like a plan. Um, and so this thing is connecting... Um, yeah, it doesn't sound like it impedes anybody's ability yeah. to get anywhere. So sounds good. It sounds like it's fine to me. I don't know what they will say, but the the uh, the spiral staircase with the small treads, I can see why they would object to. Yeah, because all you need is big boots that go over, and yeah, it. I mean, it's sort of a safety hazard for some people. Yeah, yeah. I, especially I, I, if it's a little slippery. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but I, I think we're getting a better design as a result of this process. I do too. I, I like this stair a lot better. <laughs> Tom, yeah. you know, just food for thought next time when you all do applications. I think one of the most important things you've said today is that these are two relatively limited use floors. You know, when, when you present the project, it sounds like, oh, this is the entry level, that's where all the things are happening. In reality, everybody's going downstairs for the most part. I mean, mm -hmm. you will have people here, but it's going to be at a much lower use than mealtimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. That Appreciate really it. helps a lot. Um, yeah. I'm very pleased with this, Tom. I think you've done, a, this is a really good solution. Oh. Thank you. That sounds, sounds good to me easy. too. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the board needs to send, Meyer, not to tell you what your job is, but the board needs to send <laughs> um, a message to the MAAB that 
um, if this is true and we need to have an action, so have it, maybe I'll yeah. move that we uh, vote to agree to approve this. So oh, actually, why do you need a variance for this? Because the stairs are not compliant. Forty, because they're not forty-four inches wide. No, because they're because they are winders, because they curve. Yeah. Oh, okay. Curved stairs aren't allowed in public buildings. Okay, I can tell you based on my daughter's apart, uh, my daughter's two-family house that she lives on the second floor. I would tell you it shouldn't be allowed in private buildings either. Nope. Yeah, I wish I, I had a I dollar for everybody who's gone down the stairs the wrong way. Yeah, they're very dangerous to do that because they don't. They are, uh, you know, they're very narrow at one end. Well, residential ones them. are particularly narrow because yeah. residential ones can be as narrow as thirty six inches. But I mean the I don't mean that narrow. I mean the the tread. Oh on yeah, the in, on the yeah. inside, the tread is dangerous. Yeah, well, that's because when you've got a really narrow one, base that, yep. that the width up near the center is really narrow. Yep, which is why they're not allowed for public egress stairs. Which is a really good idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, don't do so, a, don't do a show at the Shea Theater. Let me tell you, that spiral staircase is deadly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Backstage, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, backstage stairs are terrible. <laughs> oh, they're oh, this is like talk about bad treads and it's iron, it's wrought iron. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's that's pretty common common to get up to the <laughs> to the upper level of a theater stair. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you don't even need winding ones. You can go to the Academy of Music. It's a straight staircase and it is treacherous. Oh, it's bad. So treacherous. Anyway, maybe you could, yeah, we need, <laughs> they need to fix that place. Um, all right, I yeah. need a motion. Don't get me started on it. So I'll make Academy a motion music. that the board uh, transmit to the MAAB our um, approval of these, of this application. I need a second. I'll second, Elise. Okay, all those in favor, I guess we'll just do a roll call. Um, Jim? Yes, yeah. I, I are, yes, um, yeah. Cody? I think you're muted, Cody. Yeah. Yes? Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, Lise? Yes. Marty? Yes. And I will vote yes too. So we have five to zero in favor of your application for the variance for your, what do you call this winding? You don't call this winding. You call this, what's the technical term for what you're calling this? Uh, I think it's still called a curved stair. Is that okay. right, Mark? Um, sure, we'll go with that one. The, the architect Myra, why don't we just call stair. it their application for variance? Because it okay. involves the other stair yeah. too, because this is okay. only in addition. Okay. Okay. So we we are approving their application for variance. Yes. Okay. That ought to take no work whatsoever. In fact, Pamela, would you just be willing to stick it on a letterhead that say the DAAC voted on January 4th to support the request for variance? Because that, I mean, I don't even, that doesn't require any writing. Uh, That's just I, like one I sentence. Would be I would be happy to do that today because I will be out of the office tomorrow. So I can okay. send that off today. I mean, you, you basically have to do the same amount of work if I oh. sent it to you anyway. Right. <laughs> right. You put it on a letter kit. You might as well just write it. Okay. Um, okay. So thank you for bringing this to us. And if you want to bring any other projects, the sooner that you can get them to us, the better. So that we, um, this isn't about you, but we, often feel like accessibility is the afterthought. And of course, we're going to approve. And we don't always. And we've seen a few projects that, uh, both of which came from UMass, actually, um, which had uh, some things we considered to be real problems. Um, and if, if accessibility is an afterthought, there's not a lot that can be done about it. In fact, the state building inspector agreed with us on one of them. Um, 
but I so if you want to bring us something um, further uh, closer to the beginning of a process, that would be really helpful to us and really sometimes helpful to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because accessibility is too often an afterthought. And sometimes, you know, you need somebody, uh, somebody would not be able to get a job doing X, Y, or Z because they didn't think about that. They didn't think, they thought only the public has to go and we'll bring them what they need. But what if somebody wants to work there? So there are, um, there are all kinds of reasons for accessibility other than um, other than what seems apparent sometimes when you're not a person with a disability. And um, we, we like to hear from people earlier in the project and we always get heard from too late. Mm. I get, we always get it, it consulted too late. So yeah. just in the future, that would be helpful. Thank you, yeah, noted. Absolutely. Okay, okay, this is great, thank you. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your coming and good luck with the project. When is Thank it going to be, much. when do you expect it'll be open? Well, you have to wait a little while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, it should be uh, uh, in operation uh, the fall of 2026. That's not so bad. Two and a half years. Kids who are sophomores in high school. Oh my God. That would be my grandchild. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, they, they can. No, he's not ready for that. They can christen chris okay. the place. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank we have you. to. Right. Thank you all. Yeah, you we all. have to approve some minutes and then we can adjourn. Um, I need a motion about the November um, minutes, which was the one about oh. the elementary school. Oh, so Myra, I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt, but uh, the minutes were sent out to you in advance, but they were not included on the agenda for this meeting. They're oh. they're part of your regular meeting, which will take place next Tuesday. Oh, okay, fine. And um and um, Councillor uh, DeAngelis has her hand raised. Oh, okay, go for it, Pat. Well, this is a about this is an apology for disappearing on you all. Um, I did partially that was because of the election and then it was my reaction to the election. Um, and I'm I've put in to be your liaison again. I did get reelected. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to uh, catch up on is where you are about um, changing course so that you become a commission. And I had told Myra that I could work on that, but I, in terms of the role of liaison, I can't. Um, oh. And so I, I, maybe Myra, you and I need to get together for lunch and I can get caught up or something. Like we didn't that. do anything. I was waiting for you to talk to Paul. You said you'd do it after the election. And I've been out of commission. Okay. I will do that part. I thing. will do that part this week. That's a promise. Okay, okay so you cannot talk to anyone on our behalf. Thank I can you. bring questions and concerns. I can talk with, I, what we had talked about is me possibly writing up the changes in the charge and that I can't do. That really has to come from the committee. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, so we have to go directly to Paul or directly to the council, what do we have to do? Well, uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna talk with Paul and get answer your question about his thoughts on becoming your becoming a commission and how it would be funded, et cetera. I can do that. There doesn't need to be any funding. Yeah, I, yeah, I know parking isn't gonna. Um, and then I can bring back that response to the committee and then you can move forward however you need to okay. be able to do that. And I, again, well, there are two things you have to adopt as a council. One of them has nothing to do with um, any money except that we can accept it. The other one has to do with getting the parking fines directly. Yeah. So they're not they're independent of each other. You have right. to have one before the other, but you can have one without the other. <laughs> That's true on many things. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean you you don't have to have the approval of the council to receive parking fines in order to become a commission. Huh. And when you become so that would a be a town manager decision. Um, whether or not we become a commission. 
I I think I'm not sure what it is. Um, yeah, we can try to find out. We can contact um, the disability, the, the MOD, and find out. Yeah, and if yeah. you could forward anything you find out to me so I can clarify okay. stuff and talk okay. with Paul. So right. I am going to be um, out of commission tomorrow, but um, early okay. next week I could try to forward the PowerPoint presentation that um, Jeff Dugan did from the Mass Office of Disability on, on this topic. That would be very helpful, Pamela, yeah. get me back in the groove. Thank you yeah. very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And okay. Jody, I don't know if we've met before, and I haven't met Jim before, so I'm glad you're on the committee, both of you. All right, that's enough for, to hear from me. <laughs> We're okay. glad to have you back. Yep. No, this so, is good. Yeah, and I like you guys a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> so well, one one ask for me before you guys adjourn is uh, agenda items for next week. So, um, yeah, the last I talked to uh, Kathy Shane and I had a uh, interchange last month. Um, because we weren't all that happy that they went ahead and voted on the playground without talking to us again about it. And they had a miscommunication and they didn't, she didn't know they were supposed to come back about it. Um, and so I guess they decided on their playground surface without us. Um, and she was going to get back to them and find out if they wanted to come again. And so I still don't know. Um, I don't, does anybody have any agenda? We can talk about the commission thing. Oh, that's next week, isn't it? Yeah, like, it's Tuesday. Yeah. It's yeah. Tuesday. With this whole business with my mother, I've just been so completely consumed with the thinking about it. I mean, I'm not doing direct caregiving because she's still in a facility, but God, there's so much to figure out. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's just like, I can't, I'm not thinking about anything very well. Mm -hmm. It's not good. Um, anyway. I know that experience myself. You know, I mean, like, even if you're not, Senior. your hands aren't in it 24 seven, you, you just, yeah. it's on your mind all the time. And you, did I do okay. this? And did I contact that person? And what about that as a caregiver? And should we trust this guy? Cause she says no. And I don't know. Anyway, this is yeah. a public meeting. I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm going to list for agenda items, um, uh, discussion on the commission becoming the committee becoming a commission and um we still did not have an update i'll reach out to ian on the collaboration with the northampton um oh yeah okay. disability all right so those are the only two items yeah, I, I have i though. can't um yeah. i can't think of anything unless we need to know i mean the parking around the center of town is still difficult but there's nothing we can do until they finish it no. correct i believe that's correct um there was a department heads uh meeting today and um uh, guilford uh, mooring did state that they have um uh, completed for the season the work on the common um you know do they were, were working basically up until um the end of December because of the warm, unseasonably yeah. warm weather, but they're, they are, um, they've, they're stopped for the season. So. Yep. All right. All right. Well, well happy new year, Tuesday. everybody. Happy new year. And we'll the you Tuesday. Jim has something that he's trying to say. Oh. Oh. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Jim. Also mentioned in, in the discussion about, uh, the North common there, um, exploring the use of that door into the town hall from the parking lot behind the town hall uh, as a long-term solution to access in that building. And so it was, I'm not exactly sure where that stood. I know we talked about it. I know we wanted to look at that more closely. Yeah, um, I think Marty did a walk around with that. Um, so we can yeah, talk about that. Town, um, because that stair goes into employee only areas, the town isn't excited about it, but the, we're going to have to deal with the town hall at some point. Yep. Exactly. I agree with you. Um, it's just a matter of forcing the issue and finding the funds. But 
Well, isn't that a really steep ramp down? It is. It is a little steeper, but um, it's really steep. Well, from what I recall, it's not. It's I've forgotten what percentage. It's not ten percent. Um, it might be nine percent, which is slightly higher than. It's it's not that bad. Okay. Um, and if if you're in a motorized chair, which a lot of people are. Um, it's not bad and it's also a narrow one so you can grab the handrails to slow yourself if you need to so I'd rather have a steeper ramp and have it more accessible because the problem right now is it, it's just not accessible you can't get there you can't get there safely yep you know if you could get to the door that's one thing but you just can't get there safely from a parking space Okay, let's put it on the agenda. Let's put it on the agenda and let's see if we can come up with something concrete as a next step. Um, because they are doing a lot of work around town hall and they absolutely should be doing this. I was just under the impression that it was way too steep, but I'm if I'm wrong, that's great. Well, I have to say, I was really disturbed that we did not see an application for variance for replacement of those front stairs. Mm. That should have been a variance. And I was told that it was supplied. But you know what? We never got a copy. So I how could we how could that have benefited people getting in though? Um well they would have had to have gone to the board because they were replacing an existing stair and gotten a variance for not putting in a chairlift or some or providing an accessible entrance and i think they assumed that the existing entrance is accessible oh, that's typical and well, i've been typical, quiet about we... this but you just put me <laughs> i'm in a mood today and that's my soapbox for today yeah, so and I, I'm just trying to figure out once they got in the door whether it would have been feasible. Maybe it would have been. Well, maybe you can it, just... that's the design problem. Yeah. That's why you hire designers Yep. to solve that problem. Well... Because if I had done that at UMass, I would have had to have made an accessible entrance. Okay, this is a big agenda item for Tuesday, right? So we need to, we need an action plan about what we're going to do, which might have to do with the rear entrance, and it might have to do with further work on the front. If you I think agree, that, I mean, I don't think we should give them the solution. They need to find a yep. real solution that's safe. Right now, okay. we don't have a safe solution. Okay, so that's and what we're going to talk about. about that. Where, yeah. No, I, I think you're absolutely right. Yep. And they are doing all kinds of things around that structure. And they, again, afterthought, didn't think of it, didn't mm -hmm. care, didn't whatever you want to use as a verb. I agree. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, there is an assumption because there's a sign outside that says that entrance on the north side is accessible. Right. You know, there's a belief. I, I can't tell you the number of people I've said. I've said to in town, you know, town hall isn't accessible. Oh, yes, it is. We did all that big project. And I go, no, it's not. There's no safe way to get to that entrance. So it's, they're not us. They don't think. Yeah. Well, it's not even they us. Know. They're just not. They don't see it. Nope. But everybody I mean. says, you know, we spent all that money to make town hall accessible. It's accessible. Well, once nope. you're in the door, they made it accessible. Yeah. The problem is. That the, the, sidewalk, door. the sidewalk doesn't allow you to make to get to the door. Yeah. Well, right. That's a big agenda. Yeah. Yeah. So let's. Okay. Let's do that. Oh, Pamela, that's I think we're going to we have to have come some kind of an action plan, maybe some kind of a letter to the town. So I now have I have four uh, agenda items. So. Okay. Okay. Um, Committee to commission, update from Northampton, um, uh, 
access to town hall from the rear parking lot and um or well, just access to town hall, town hall okay access to town hall yeah and um yeah and yeah. is all this still being recorded it is still being recorded and we like cut the recording after the after you said about the the um the uh minutes not being part of this meeting are you allowed to do that <laughs> no i am <laughs> no i am not no but we You're can not <laughs> we have to adjourn before she sure. can do that oh god <laughs> <laughs> But we're okay. fine. We, we are we are perfectly in compliance with the uh, with the open meeting law, yeah. and we will have the uh, discussion about the minutes on at the next meeting on Tuesday. I just sent those the information out in advance. So, um, and okay. shortly after, I'll say the last thing, and then we can ask to adjourn. Shortly after this meeting, sometime this afternoon, you should receive a Zoom invite for our meeting on Tuesday. So <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. okay. Thank cool. You. Uh, why Tuesday? Yeah, that's fine. My brain hey. is not here. Okay, mine either. All right. Thank Motion you very adjourn. much, everybody. Thank have you, a nice everyone. snowstorm on Saturday, Sunday. Oh God. Oh, I how much we're adjourn. gonna get. Okay, M Marty has just uh, made a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Somebody. I did. I oh. just did. All in favor of adjourning. Aye. 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 All Aye. not Happy in New favor Year. of adjourning. Nope. Okay. Okay. So right. uh, this is a fascinating meeting. Next time we'll adjourn earlier. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Have a nice day. weekend, everybody. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.